Thanks, Rhonda. Perry Red here with Socially Speaking's Fail Justice Safe for this day, the 13th of April of 2021. Well, it looks sort of like the 13th of April, 1986, or the 13th of April, 1976. You see, the point is that justice for those with the most responsibility for executing it, it's just not coming. The people have been slighted once again. In the, the police shooting of uh, Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, that brought about so much upheaval in that particular city, the fact is the officer, um, what's his name, Ryan Chesky, who shot Jacob Blake in the back seven times, will not be disciplined. And has returned to duty. Another example of failed justice. And we remember what that looks like. The thing is, it happened a year ago, and there were rallies, protests. Matter of fact, I attended a protest at the, at the, the, the Lincoln Memorial, right here in Washington, D.C. And there were thousands of supporters of justice out there. But it didn't make a difference. High-profile black folks who were calling for justice, including the Reverend Al Sharpton, didn't happen. Listen, right here in the district, we had an incident at 7th and Longfellow where the police, the Metropolitan Police Department, they attacked a group of young black men. And those young black men stood up and fought back. The police put their knees on, on, on the neck to one young man. I've watched. I, I've got the video. Matter of fact, let me share it with you. And as I shared this with the uh, Advisory Neighborhood Commission, 4B, whom I was later elected to. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was elected to the ANC and I sh shared it with them as a member of. The police department vowed to me as the representative of those constituents, that they would release the name of the officer, that disciplinary charges would be coming, and that they would file a report with our ANC. Guess what? It's two years later, and nothing, silence, crickets, from our police department right here in the district. I'm not surprised. Am I angry? Angry? You think? Well, you should be. So here we are. We have another death in America. Two resignations. A Brooklyn Center Police Chief Tim Gannon and Kimberly Porter, the police officer who fatally shot Dante Wright during a traffic stop on Sunday, have both resigned. They've resigned from the department. Now, the mayor of, uh, of uh, uh, Brooklyn Center Mike Elliott, he announced the chief's re resignation during a press conference at City Hall just this afternoon. And Elliott told reporters that uh, city officials didn't ask Porter to resign. That was a decision she made. Listen, here's the deal. When they're allowed to resign, then they have the, the, the luxury of reapplying at another department, whether they're convicted or not. And it's more likely not. As I watch the video and listen to the officer's commands, it is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy their taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single bullet. And during Now, I know folks want to point the finger at black-on-black -black violence. I'm going to tell you, that's not my issue. That can be your issue, but that ain't my issue. My issue is getting guns off the streets, eliminating guns from American society. Oh, that's a tall order. Sure it is. But you can't kill nobody if they don't have a gun. So what happened with uh, the young man who was killed, Dante Wright? Well, here's a, a quick report. Let me traffic share stop. She was training another officer. The mayor of Brooklyn Center also announcing today that the police chief has stepped down. An acting police chief now in place. There's just a lot of chaos going on right now. We're just trying to wrap our heads around the situation. 
and try and create some calm. But overnight, the protests continued nationwide. More than 50 arrests made in Minneapolis and Brooklyn Center. And you yourself went out there last night. You went out there with protesters. What was that like? It was very tense. Where I was, uh, they were protesting peacefully. They were certainly uh, angry at uh, the, the situation. And among the family of Dante Wright, there's also shock and disbelief over his death. The police say she accidentally grabbed the gun instead of a taser. So you don't accidentally, accidentally grab something, point it at them, not realize what you have in your hands. It's just not true. Dante's parents doubting this was an accidental shooting this morning in an interview with ABC's Robin Roberts. Do you accept that explanation, Mr. Wright? I cannot accept that. I lost my son. He's never coming back. And this is an officer that's been on the force for 26 plus, 26 years. I can't accept that. I would like to see justice served and her held accountable for everything that she's taken from us. The family of Dante Wright is now represented by attorney Benjamin Crump. Say his name! Dante Wright! He also represents the family of George Floyd. Outside the courthouse, where former officer Derek Chauvin is standing trial, the Floyd family uniting with the Wright family, calling for change. At some point, we need officers to be held accountable, Amen. charged, Amen. and convicted. Amen. Just because you are a lot don't mean that you're above the Once law. again, we see the police have lost their damn minds. And that ain't the only time. Here is an active duty soldier who stopped by police for something so petty, right? Uh, he had dark, dark tinted windows on his SUV. His license plate, his new car license plate was in the window, but the police couldn't see it. And so they pull their weapons, draw their weapons on him. Keep in mind, he's in uniform. And they've always uh, excoriated those on the left who are anti-war, who don't want their soldiers in foreign interventions and tell us, support your troops. I'll never forget the backlash I got when I uh, opposed the war in Iraq. But here are your sworn peace officers doing what they do well and do best, and that's assault the general population who are black, Latino, or otherwise. I'm bitter about it, and I've been bitter for a long time. How long is it? Well, I've talked about it time and time again. I've went on TV, and I've opined. I've opined with, uh, against police supporters, even uh, police, uh, those who are in police authority. I've had the opportunity to testify before the D.C. Council regarding these police issues. I've faced off with the police, and I've even tried to work with the police. But regardless of what tack I'm taking, or many of my fellow activists, we're still being killed. There's nothing different about it. And you know what the cycle looks like. Hey, I went on TV and I said this. This was um, after the death of Michael Brown, a year later. Here, check this out. What we are getting is this cycle that continues to happen. And I call it the eight steps to a, uh, of a police killing. First of, course, first of all, there's the shock. And then we go through the outrage. Then we go for the call for calm. Mm -hmm. We want the community to be calm. Then the investigation to nowhere. Yeah. Happens all the time. Then the failure to charge. Now, we have get more charge uh, and now, but it's turned now into a failure to convict. Then we get the kumbaya moment where everyone hold hands, let's all get along, let's have uh, uh, these police uh, community interactions. Then there's the amnesia time in the country where we forget all about what really happened and then we're back to business as usual. So, Yes, that's yours truly, sharing the eight steps of a police shooting. And that's what happened with Jacob Blake. Announced just today. My point is this. We, we fight sometimes for the wrong thing. And we often fight each other rather than point toward the common enemy. We're fighting for justice within the Healthy DC and Me Coalition. We're fighting for the residents of Woodbury Village Apartments. And we're fighting an awful 
huge, and I will say corrupt system of our D.C. government who continues to war against us. We need you. We need you to contribute. Rhonda Hamilton is going to share with you how you can support the Healthy DCME Coalition. And I, as the executive director of the nonprofit Sincere 7, I ask your support as well. A, a huge labor battle was just lost in the, the attempt to unionize Mississippi workers who work for Amazon. My people just don't get it. But we're going to continue to beat the drum until you do. This is, socially speaking, failed justice after you run.